So welcome back to the channel for an all new season of Outdoor Adventures. You know, the past few years, I've taken you on fishing trips around the East Coast. Uh, we've talked about some conservation, some habitat efforts and different things we've got going on here in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, we took you on a bird hunt, you know, over the winter. So, you know, you can check out the other videos that are on my channel. For those of you that have been around for a few years, sincerely appreciate, you know, you watch and share and hitting that like button if you enjoy the content that I post on this channel. But you know, this season, we've got a whole new schedule with the Kentucky Team Trail. We're gonna do some more conservation work. We're gonna go to some lakes that we've never been to. And we've always got that Lake Erie trip lined up for you in June. So stick around. This is our first episode of a new season. But the first thing I wanted to ask you to do, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, hit that share button, you know, if you see this on social media, Facebook, whatever. You know, I really appreciate, you know, you sharing this out there. We're going to start off this season, we're going to go to Lake Erie for one of those epic smallmouth trips in June. One of my favorite places to go out around the Bass Islands. You know, I look forward to this trip every year, uh, just like it's the first time I've ever been. You know, I can't explain the rush to get out on Lake Erie with Dad uh, and go chase some of those smallmouth. So every season, just as quick as school ends, you know, I load my boat up or get north just as quick as I can uh, to try to get after some of those smallmouth. You know, that's the time of year when the Kentucky team trail, the schedule slows down a little bit. You know, the spawn and whatnot's already happened in Eastern Kentucky. So, you know, really this is just me trying to chase it north. Unfortunately, this year we missed out on the pre-spawn bite. We're just a little late getting here. Uh, May kicked off, you know, got that water temperature rising. So, you know, got a lot of fish on beds, I suspect this trip. Over the years when I've taken you on trips, if you watched any of my videos, I usually use a mixture of drone footage to try to give you a vision of where we are, what we're fishing, uh, what the structure, what the habitat, you know, what the lake looks like. Uh, so I think that really helps, you know, take you uh, to these places to, to see some of these places. And you know, this trip coming up, uh, Lake Erie, our first Lake Erie trip of 2023, I've got a ton of drone footage, some places I've never shot drone footage. Just gives you an incredible look at, at the Bass Islands. Uh, like you've never seen. So stay with us, stay tuned. Can't wait to, to share this trip to Lake Erie with you. So I've never owned one of these things, now I do. You know, uh, Lake Erie, I, some people call it a, a flogger. Uh, just allows you to look down the water. You know, I got back from this trip and I really felt like that that was something that, that I needed on this trip. Uh, and not for the reasons that you think. You know, on this trip, unfortunately we, we had a uh, casualty, we lost a GoPro to Lake Erie. We're gonna to try to go back and retrieve it, but, but nonetheless, we captured some awesome footage. You know, one of the reasons that I lost the camera in the water is I've really focused on trying to get some more underwater footage on these videos to show you what things actually look like, you know, how we're actually using a presentation uh, to attract a bite, you know, and just to try to give you that underwater perspective, uh, what's going on. You know, Lake Erie's just full of smallmouth. You know, and this trip turned out to be a bed fishing trip as I expected, you know, there, there are just so many smallmouth. The Bass Islands got their name uh, for the fact that smallmouth bass would come in around those islands in those shallow areas to spawn uh, throughout the history of the lake. So, you know, when you think about that, it's probably the, one of the premier places to be uh, in the Western Basin on Lake Erie, you know, to catch smallmouth bass, at least in and around the spawn. Um, so this trip, you know, we, we really kind of knew some areas that we caught fish on in the past uh, that held beds, you know, obviously, for anybody that's been up to Lake Erie, it's not a secret, put in bays usually full uh, of bass beds if you time it upright and the wind lets you see those beds. Uh, or you can use that you know device, that flogger in the background there, and, and that'll help you see through uh, a little bit of chop. You know, there's some places around Middle Bass, in the marina, the state parks, you know, uh, any of those shallow areas that have that sandy, hard bottom mixture uh, that these fish like, you know, they usually set up in bed just in masses. So on these smallmouth beds, I'm using a mixture of a Yum Ned Crawl, uh, and I'm also using a TRD Crawl. And I just like the crawl. Uh, this time of year, you know, it, I can see it good in the nest. It's just, you know, it's a bait that I like to use for bedding bass. Now I'm picking a loud color, a red, an orange, something that I can see that really stands out to me, okay? And that really helps me see that, that bait in that bed. You know, it's crazy to think that a little detail, just like pinching the claws off, you know, because I've had those bass, they'll go in, they'll grab that claw, and they'll move that off the nest. And, you know, they won't eat it or ever get it to a point where you could hook that fish. So if you watch videos in the past on my channel, I, I showed that last year when we hit, me and Steve Cox had that epic smallmouth beatdown uh, on Lake Erie. 
You know, on Lake Erie, the conditions have to cooperate almost perfectly uh, for you to be able to sight fish at without a flogger. You know, the wind seems to always come from some direction. You try to use maybe an island to give you a little bit of shelter uh, so that you can have those flat areas. And you know, we were lucky to get some cooperation from the wind in that way. You know, and we could get in and really look at those beds. And it's just so much fun because, you know, you could sit and just flip. And as soon as you'd see that circle, you flip in that circle and those smallmouth would pounce on it just about immediately. You know, it seemed like these fish were just coming in as we found these beds and uh, just setting up. There were a few nests that had male and female on the nest, but for the most part, you know, you just had that buck bass preparing that, that bed. Uh, and in that way, you know, the timing was just incredible. So, you know, if you're lucky enough to hit Lake Erie or Lake St. Clair, uh, and time these trips up to where the wind, the weather, uh, and, and the bike cooperates, it can just be one of the best trips you've ever been on in your life. You know, Dad and I, we, we had a little bit of run in with everything. Like I said, we lost a GoPro. Uh, had this fish here, we got tangled up in the trolling motor, you know, trying to get around to the side where the camera is, you know, you gotta capture that footage. Uh, and, and it just didn't work out. We managed to get it free, managed to catch the fish somehow, uh, didn't get off. And you know, just just a, a another experience, right? So I don't know that I've ever been on a trip where I had five days of weather that lined up just like this did. You know, when we got there on Saturday after graduation, uh, and through Tuesday or Wednesday, we had waves less than two feet. It's very rare in the spring that you get up there that the weather cooperates you on that way. A lot of times, you know, the wind will steal a day or maybe an afternoon or a morning from you. Uh, and that's just part of going north to fish. That's just one of the sacrifices that you make. You know, and I'll be honest, I think that's one of the reasons that the lakes stay uh, loaded with so many good smallmouth is that there's so many days the weather just doesn't allow you to fish uh, and keeps those pressure limited on those fish. You know, on this trip, we didn't catch any fish over five pounds. We had a lot of solid four pound fish, you know, three, three and a half pound fish. And, you know, in my opinion, in terms of black bass species, you can't beat a smallmouth bass on the Great Lake. Uh, and just no give up in them. And it, it just makes it so much fun when they jump out of the water, you know, two, three, four times. Uh, it just makes it so much fun when you finally get your hands on that fish and you finally get that fish in the boat. Okay. Is how this is rigged up, all right? I really like for my hook to be just this clean and dead down the middle. So that thing, when it stands up on the bottom on this mushroom Ned head, it looks just as real as, as it could. You know, you'll see when it's in the water, those claws will just stand straight up, you know, and flare out. And it just looks great. Again, I just picked a loud color. This is red. Okay, I used a lot of orange, as you can see in the video. And I really used, you know, one or two crawls. Like I said, I used the uh, Z-Man crawl, okay? And then I used the Yum Ned crawl. Now. I like the Ned crawl a little better and here's why. Some of that Elastec material is, is hard to fool with. And as I was telling you, I, I love for that thing to be rigged up straight. And sometimes I just have trouble getting it to my liking in terms of how I like that thing to be standing straight up. So I just feel like the Yum Ned crawl is a little easier to fool with. Again, we're very similar baits. Okay, same size, same profile, uh, just, just looks so similar. The only difference is the material. And I just prefer the material that the Yum is made out of, all right? So I'm also using a white net head. And again, I'm just looking for something that's visible in that nest. So I chose the white, you know, maybe orange, whatever you colored these, something bright fluorescent that you can see. You know, again, we're bed fishing. So we just want to see this bait in there on the bottom. That's why I chose the, the color of the bait and that's why I chose the color of the head. All right, I've got a little heavier head here. This is an eighth ounce. And the reason I've got an eighth is just so I can throw it out there a little further. I'm not as much worried about presentation because I just want this thing to sit right in there on the bed and just you know, flared up with those claws flared out. The one tip that I can give you about a smallmouth bed is there's one spot that if you put this crawl that they will eat it every time. Uh, but you know, again, I go through, I, I hook some of these fish and I move on to a new area. I don't sit on these areas and beat them up for a week. Okay, so our setup, let's talk about that for a minute. We've got the Favorite Rods Pro Series. Okay, seven foot three, uh, fast action tip, medium heavy rod. Okay, you know, and I've just got it with a dial reel. I've got 15 pound Seaguar fluorescent braid. Okay, I wanna see that stuff. So I've got it tied off with an FG knot, all right? FG knot's just always been my favorite up there. It's clean, uh, works great. And I've got eight pound Seaguar red label uh, all the way down to my bait. That's just the standard setup for me no matter where I'm at. If I'm fishing a Ned rig, okay, 
I'm always gonna have eight pound test. The one thing that, that you can see me do here and I make a mistake is you have to check that line. Lake Erie's full of limestone, those jagged bottoms, those zebra mussels, just so many different elements that are tough on this line. That's one of the reasons I choose Seaguar Red Label is that I feel like it's as durable you know, as any brand line in that pound weight. Uh, it just holds up, it seems like, for me. My line was bad, I knew it was bad. The Seaguar Red Label 8 pound just seems to hold up for me as well as anything in those conditions. Now, in this video, I got a little lazy. I didn't retie, and in not retying, it cost me a fish. You know, you know, I posted that reel, of that fish breaking me off. You know, after I didn't retie over on my Instagram. So please follow me over there, Jason Kenner Fishing. You can check that out. Uh, but here you can see that fish. You know, it's just user error. Uh, it's completely entirely my fault. I had to retie. I knew I had to retie. I mentioned it just a few minutes before, and sure enough, you know, it bit me. I, although I've never seen a fish jump this many times after being broke off. This fish jumped eight or ten times just trying to shake that lure out of her head. Uh, if the water had been a little more flat, I'm just about sure she came off of the bed, but you know the wind didn't cooperate uh, to let us see that bed in, in that moment and you know try to go back and hook her to get that one out of her mouth. But you know, it's just something that happens uh, when you bass fish. Had to be in here. So I appreciate you checking out the channel. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to hit that like button. Hit me up with a comment. What do you think about the video? Where do you catch smallmouth bass? What's your favorite lure to catch those smallmouth off those beds? 